On June 14, 2012, the Alamance Makers Guild held a special how-to session all about crafts. Angie Parrish volunteered to demonstrate her hobby of plarning and crocheting with recycled materials. Afterwards, folks got a chance to try their own hand at crochet. Here's what we learned. I crochet, and I do what they call plarning, or um, tarning, which is t-shirt material instead. And See this, people were so nice to bring me some bags. I'm gonna show you how I do it. So I have a plastic bag. This is Walmart. And then we still think the bags are colors on the color. Yep, there you go. I love different color bags. <laughs> um, <laughs> seriously, I because I can get you a supply of well, and ones. I'll show with you orange what. logos on them. That is made out of bread bags. So it's the Marietta Brit bags. Mm -hmm. So yes, I can use just about anything. In fact, I've got a carload full of those bread bags right now from work. Um, you flatten your little bag out. Fold it up. Pair of scissors. You clip off the end of it. Scissors don't I've got like five pairs in that bag. And then you cut it in even rings, and it'll be a ring when you finish cutting them all off. You worry about being fast or anything like that. No. Just gotta make sure you don't clip through your bag all the way through. <laughs> Or if you have a hole in the bag, you can cut around the hole in the bag. And then when I get to the end of it, I usually tie a couple of them together and it's a cat toy. Because I have a kitten, so she's got a toy. And she'll chase that all over the house. And then you've got rings. Once you've cut them out, you've got rings. You take your rings, you do like you do with rubber bands, and lace them together. So now you've got oh, your plar. You did that so fast. <laughs> Whoa. Sorry, I'll slow down. Well, I'm used to sitting in front of the TV set, and I'll just. You probably don't mean anything. Yeah, I don't even think about it. I just do it, yeah. And you pull it through. Like if you were stringing rubber bands together. Or that's, yeah. 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 Jelly bracelets. Yeah, jelly bracelets, exactly. <laughs> God, you're old. Yeah, anyway. Okay, and once you have your plarn, I've got where I've done tons of it. And what I do is, depending on what color bags I've got and where I've got them from, I try to keep it so that I keep keep them all together. And so I'll have, this is my work basket down here, where I've collected different color bags. Different skeins of, of, of plastic. <laughs> so I have like, this one is all white bags, and then I have another one that has red and white bags, and, and I'll work until... I've got a big enough ball. I need a ball almost one and a half times that to make one of these bags, or one of these bags, or one of these bags. So. And how long that bag is? How that ball is? Huh? Or how long that ball is? I don't know. I've never measured it. <laughs> <laughs> never measured one. There's I have no idea. Um, a mile. <laughs> it probably is. Probably as close to it. And. Now I'm going to show you how I do These are my good scissors for cutting fabric. Um, T-shirts are done this way. You take your whole T-shirt, make sure you don't have seams, so there's no seams running up the side of the T-shirt, because wherever you cut it, that's going to be, be a weak spot when you crochet it. And you fold it so that you have 
a little bit of an edge here that you're not going to cut. can be used for dog toys. I braid them together to make dog toys out of them. So, shoot me. And again, it's not precise, but about an inch wide and leave your little spot at the end. strips. I have this little thing in the middle there. You can actually <laughs> it doesn't look it looks, it looks like a small one. What then you do is you cut catty corner across. <laughs> ah, makes sense now. Yeah. And be careful not to cut any of your other <laughs> Defeats the purpose of yeah, sure. just Yeah, because you're trying to get one long piece. Does it give a weak, a weak area in the chain? No, not really, not if you're trying to keep it. I've not had one pop, let's put it that way. Because basically, like with the bags, you're going to yeah. kind of bundle it anyway. Well, um, no. What you do is you stretch it out so it's sort of. Um, Forms more of a rounded, huh. rounded uh, form. Curls more. Up. Yeah, sort of curls. I'll show you. That would be one. Does the material of the t-shirt matter, or just the seams? Um, no seams. I have not tried anything. I get all my t-shirts from one location. A friend of mine owns a company that prints, makes and prints t-shirts. And what I get is his irregulars. Like if he has some that are get a nick in it during the process somewhere. He gives me the t-shirts, I get them for free. And like this particular t-shirt, it had a hole in it that occurred during processing. Yeah. So he gave it to me for free. I've gotten ones that... Um, yeah. that's, that's TS well, Designs, actually, right? Yes, it is TS Designs and Eric Henry and Thompson Heath are the people that give me the t-shirts. And then now that I've got this one long, huge piece from that t-shirt, I take and pull it so that it's more rounded and easier to crochet. And then I roll my balls. Um, couldn't imagine wearing something this color. But um, that's also a t-shirt. <laughs> but um, yeah, you can, I have not, like I said, I've not used any like uh, mixed blends or anything like this. This is 100% cotton. Um, this is one, two, six, seven t-shirts. Um, extra large t-shirts are easier because you can get more yarn out of them, but that's seven. So, and they're very hardy. This one can be washed and dried in the washer. Um, these guys can be washed in the washer. I wouldn't suggest putting them in the dryer. <laughs> um, but those, the plastic ones are really great for like going to the beach or the pool or whatever because they, you know, they dry out really quickly. Um, I sell them online on Etsy at Pup and Poke, and um, I also make other things as well. I have little purses, pot holders, I've made baskets, and doormats, and trivets, and here's my granny square. <laughs> so pretty much anything you can crochet, you can use this for. Um, I've made, like I said, baskets before out of it. Different shape baskets. But yeah, that's it. I have K is what I use at home. Um, and I don't know if you've ever crocheted before, but basically you make a loop like that over. And so everything that I do is double. So it's two pieces. Twist it. And that's your basic chain. And 
if you get these really bright colored bags, um, like the bread bags, some of the ones I had were red, white, and blue, so I made um, little bracelets, and it takes about three or four loops, and you can do little bracelets for the kids. But this is just a single loop, and that's what I start with. If I'm going to do a bag like this, I'll do two single loops, and I'll do uh, nine to 12 of those, depending on if it's gonna be a small bag like that or one of the bigger beach bags. And then I go back and I do, I'm not even sure what it's called. My grandmother taught me this like so many years ago and she never gave me names for anything. But it's a loop, back loop into what you crocheted in your original chain. And I'll have three, pull through two, have two left, pull through one. Wrap it, do it again. And I do that around three times around. I'll go down to the end, turn, go back down, and do it three times until I have on the bottom of it, you'll see that I have a base that's really thick so that if you put your wine bottle in this bag, it's not gonna fall through. Um, cans, really good for carrying cans, cans of soup or whatever. And that's how you use the corn. And let's see what I did with the other hook. With the t-shirt stuff, I use a bigger hook. I use an end size hook because it's so thick and your hands get really sore. But it's the same thing, mm -hmm. except for it's one twist, pull through. Pull that first one tight. And this takes a whole lot more time because it's so much thicker. That's seven, eight, nine. I go kind of fast, so if you want me to show you again up close, I can do that. And it's the same thing, you can do it double or triple to get that. Cut. Questions? Anybody want to try it? Hold it like a pencil. Okay. Twist. Mm -hmm. Wrap. Okay. Pull through. Okay. Is this like those those um, pot holders I used to do, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> they look this big and then they shrunk down to like mm -hmm. really, really little. Yeah, really okay. tiny. So I tiny. hold it like a pencil. You said. Go around like this, mm -hmm. and then what? Pull it through. Use your hook and pull it through this loop you got right there. Okay, so then, and then pull that. Oh, yep. whoops, did I do? You got it right. And then what do I do now? Push it back down? Pull that so that this gets tight. Okay, okay. And now you got your loop. And then I just keep doing it over and over again? Yep. Okay. Oh, you what, pulled it? Oh, oh well. <laughs> 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 Good support there. Okay, so I've got it around, and then you pull this up here, and then you pull. Yep. Oh, but mine's coming off. Why's mine coming off? It did it. Just you twisted did it. it around. Just twisted it around. <laughs> oh, okay. This is the same kind of thing we experienced when we did our nail making. Those of us that got to go. You're right. When when the master does it, it looks easy, and you it think, oh, so I can do that. So That's so great. easy. <laughs> yeah, that is the difference. Ours, yeah, ours was incandescent. So, I think we need to electrify the yarn to uh, level of danger. Yes. Ex Keep your focus. Extreme planning. <laughs> There you go. Uh, a class of 24 students. Clarning is with plastic. Oh, tarning is with t-shirts. <laughs> now you need like one tutor for every person. I already taught myself on YouTube because I learned as a kid, but I never did. So my great grandmother taught me when I was five, and I just have done it ever since. And everybody does it differently. So and the other YouTube video I watch, I have to wait a minute. What are they doing there? It does take practice. So some of this. Some of it is about not going around too tightly, I guess. Yeah. 
because you need some leverage to pull the, the needle yeah. through the hook. Yeah, because you have to have enough room to get the needle. And to get it to go around the knot, yeah. yeah. And if you pull everything really, really tight, then it's like hard. You're it's well, really hard. Especially for your next stitch, because you're yeah. stitching back through. Because you're stitching back through, and you have to have enough of a loop to stick the needle back through to pull it through. If you pull it too tight. You, you're yeah. Stitching. And then as you... See, you're, you're looking at this, and what I've done with that is all I've done is I did one, two, three, and then I do a little single okay. to get my loop. And then I do one, two, three, and then I go back over it, and this is where I put my hook into it. So when you're looking at this, that's basically just a net. Okay, yeah. And you'll see here in a minute, it'll start rounding, going and looking like a flower yeah. in a second. So you always start from the center and work your way out and around, I guess. Yes, then. when you're doing circles, yeah. And even some squares. Yeah, like the granny squares and it starts you in the start center. start in the middle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see, just then I just made, it's like a flower. So, she's doing really well over here. We're just messing around. <laughs> <laughs> but see, it's a little bit harder to use that than it is. Yarn yeah, or I, plastic. I have some yarn I've used that's about that thick, and it's it's what your hands get sore really fast. Yeah, especially if you're doing double and triple crochets. And yeah, all triples. See, I can't even read when somebody gives me directions on how to do. It's one yeah. of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody show me how to do it. <laughs> that was that way too. I used to knit, and I used to think, oh, I, I, crocheting is just I can't do it. I never I, could get it straight originally. And then I discovered what I was doing wrong was I was just doing the same stitch over and over and over again. I wasn't compensating for the ends and stuff. And yeah. And now See, I can't knit. I get all confused. You've got to keep <laughs> a steady gauge when you knit. It's, yeah. With crocheting, it's a little bit more forgiving in my yeah. opinion. you got to give it a try. No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> The Alamance Makers Guild is a group of talented and creative makers located in Alamance County, North Carolina, and is sponsored in part by Harris Educational, makers of reinventing science kits like Reinventing Edison Build Your Own Light Bulb.